All right, guys, let's rock through the single phase transformer projects, then we'll move over to the three phase transformer projects. Um, keep in mind, I'm showing you your expected voltages, but you're not just watching this video and copying the values down. Um, you're going to have to physically wire the project for your shop teacher, right? This is just to show you if you had some issues or if you wanted to watch this video prior to coming in uh, to the lab or afterwards just to clear some things up. Um, so let's start off with the, uh, the single phase. Uh, from the previous video where we walked through the buck boost, uh, I was saying that I want you to make sure that you make use of the uh, 250 milliamp fuses. So your instructor has these in the cabinet. Don't go and grab a 5 amp fuse from the PLC station. Otherwise, if you screw up the connections to the transformer, then smoke and a pancake, the transformer will be toast. Okay, so make sure that you're uh, using the 250 milliamp fuses. Make sure that you are using the, um, this, the 3 amp breaker. Okay, so these breakers are from like 1964. Um, they finally failed last year. Um, so there are a couple of uh, Eaton uh, breakers. I think they are 4 amp breakers, but do not use the 15 amp breakers on these transformers. So you're using the 3 amp breaker and you're making sure that you're only putting a 250 milliamp fuse in here. Otherwise, you're responsible for smoking a pancake. Okay, so let's move on now. Uh, first one we're doing is the, uh, the single phase transformer. So we're gonna feed H1 and H2 off of line one and line two. So again, we have line one, line two, line three from our three phase source. There's two eight available in the shop. So we're gonna put two eight to our transformer here. So I'm gonna feed line one to H1, and I'm gonna feed line two to H2. And the first connection we're gonna do is we're going to do the lower voltage or the parallel connection on our secondaries. So on our secondary, uh, I neglected to put my markings on there. Give me two seconds and I'll mark off the secondary um, connections that I had here. Give me two seconds. Okay, so there's the terminal markings here. So just keep in mind that other people are using the room and these transformer uh, units. And so when you come back the next day, your green painter's tape may not be there. So make sure you make a note of what the terminals are. The terminals from the previous video that we were watching on the Buck Boost test, uh, this station, unit number 11, ended up being X1, X2, X4, X3. X1, X2, X4, X3, all the way through. Um, so let me know, and I'd like a little bit of feedback as to like, we've like messed up the secondary windings here in that they're not sequentially one, two, three, four. Um, so let us know whether, you know, that causes unwanted confusion. You're already screwed up enough on the connections of the transformers, so why would we do this to you, screwing up the secondary of the transformers? But that being the case, I have X1, X2, X4, and X3. If you're wondering where that came from, there's a previous video in this playlist on the buck boost test on this unit. Okay, so we're doing the lower voltage connection. So I'm going to parallel my secondary. So that means that I'm going to connect up X1 and X3. Easy enough. So X1 and X3. And I'm also gonna parallel X2 and X4. Okay, on the, the secondary side, you have two lines. You have line one and line two. Uh, so we're just gonna test out the voltages between those two points. I find it's easier to make use of this guy right here. So this is just literally just a plastic box with some, term, uh, some touch safe terminals. So if we're gonna test out the voltage between two points, I'd like to see like what the two lines are. So I've got line one, line two. I'm gonna bring X1 down to one of these terminals right here. And then I gotta look at, uh, so I could have grabbed X1 or X3, right? Uh, X2 and X4 are parallel together, so I could grab X2 or X4 uh, for my other terminal. So I'm gonna grab X2, I'm gonna come down to this terminal right here. So I find it easier to take a look at the voltages um, just by using these terminals. And when we get into the three phase, you'll see why, because there's be, um, there's connections everywhere, so I'd like to bring out my terminals to line one, line two, line three, and possibly the neutral there. So I'm gonna have my meter on AC voltage, and I'm gonna go from the common and the voltage terminals, and I'm going to look at the voltage on these two points here. So 
the beauty of these guys is that everything is touch safe now. So let's see if you can see the voltage. No, let me move that over a touch so you can see it. Okay, it looks good. So now we're gonna energize this up. So now I'm gonna turn the, turn the breaker on. And you can see that on the secondary, I got 125 volts. Okay, so I have 125 volts between um, X1 and X2. And I have 125 volts between X3 and X4. So if I wanted to test out the voltage between X3 and X4, then I move these guys down to X3 and X4. Energize the circuit again. And I got 125 volts on that winding as well. So on these transformers, there are two secondary windings and they have identical voltages of 120, in this case, 125, 126 volts. Remember that these voltages are higher at the moment uh, because we don't have a, a physical load that is connected to the secondary of the transformer. So it's just a voltage, there's no current flowing at the moment. If we hooked up uh, a load to the secondary here, then we would see the voltage drop to 120 volts. So primary voltage, as we saw on the previous, um, previous video, was uh, was two eight. So I'm going to take um, the connections off the secondary. There, we clearly saw that there was uh, equal voltages on our secondary, 125 volts each, and that's coming from our primary. And the primary voltage is two eight. Okay. Again, today it's two ten. It really depends on whether the big ass compressor at the end of the the hall is on or not. If the large compressor turns on. Um, then the voltage starts to sag on the entire floor. So the more things that turn on on this floor, the more volt, the, the incoming voltage will drop. So today it's not 28, it's actually 210. So that would also explain why we have a little bit higher voltage on the secondary there. So we're doing the parallel connection right now for our single phase transformer. We have basically 28 coming in, 210 coming into the primary, and on each of our secondary windings being seen on uh, X1 to X2, or X3 to X4, we have 125 volts. Yay. So that's our parallel connection. The next thing we're gonna do is the, uh, is the series connection. So there's a number of qu questions for you to answer uh, on pages 12, and 12 through 14, it looks like. And then if you get to uh, page 15, then we have the, the next one, we're doing the, the high voltage or the series connection of the windings there. So let's do that, let's de-energize this guy. We're keeping the, the same primary voltage, so H1 and H2 can remain the same. Uh, I'm gonna take my connections off for these two guys right here. Um, and then I'm going to series up X2 and X3. So again, we're on page 15 now, guys. We're jumpering X2 and X3. So the beauty of these transformers is that we can do, uh, because they have two secondary windings, we can do both the low and the high voltage outputs for these guys. Low voltage always means parallel connection, high voltage always means the series connection. So let's check out the voltages here. Uh, with this one we have a number of voltages available. Uh, so if we look at the voltage between uh, X2 and, uh, sorry, between X1 and X4, so X1 and X4, so the outside terminals, where we jumper to X2 and X3, our inside portion of the windings there, and we're looking at the outside voltage. The ratio of this guy we saw was 2.8 on the primary, giving us 120, 120 on the secondary. So that's actually a root three relationship. So if you take 2.8 divided by 120, you get root three. Uh, so we have 120 volts on each of the secondaries. So now if I'm looking at the outside X1 to X4, then we should have uh, 240 volts available. Very nice. Okay, so again, the voltage is 250, right? But that's because incoming voltage is a little bit higher today at 210, and there's no physical load on the secondary of the, of the transformer. And so if we put a load on there, then it would drop 10 or 11 volts, down to our nominal 240 volts on the output there. Beautiful. Uh, X2 and X3, 
uh, could be jumpered down to the neutral there. So if we're looking at the voltage between line and neutral, then that would be corresponding to the voltage that's available on each of the, the secondary windings there, right? So uh, let's take a look at that. So the, uh, we have the connection between uh, X1 and X4 that we were looking at. So now we want to look at the voltage between X1 and X2. So similar to the previous one, we got X1 and X2. That voltage we saw was 125. And then the voltage between 3 and 4, so between uh, X3 and X4, will also be 120. 25 volts. Again, high because we don't have a physical load connected to the secondary of this winding. So once we jumper X2 and X3, we create a series connection and that provides us with the higher output voltage. So we have 120 volts. I'm going to say 120 volts, even though it's 125. 120 volts available on each of these secondary windings. When we series those connections up together, then on the outer connections between X1 and X4, we should see the sum of those voltages being 240 volts. Again, we're seeing 250 because there's no physical load on the transformer. Okay, so those are your first uh, single phase transformer projects. Uh, and the next video, we're gonna go over the three phase. And let's see, what are we starting off with the three phase? Again, number of questions in your transformer manual to, uh, to finish up. And, sorry for the delay. Looks like we're going to do, on project number three, on page 23, uh, we're going to do an open delta to open delta. So we'll see you in the next video for that one.